So I'm going to show you with my white sparkly yarn first, and I'm using my 4 millimeter crochet hook. The first thing you're going to do is take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. And then go ahead and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. So you're going to make a chain, and we're going to start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then make a single crochet in every stitch back across, and that will give you a stitch count of three. and then you're just going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch over, and then a single crochet into the next stitch, last stitch, and then chain one, turn your work, and repeat. So you're just going to keep repeating this until you have the length that you need for your dog. So I finished mine with about 11 rows and this is what it looks like and it fits from the tip of the triangle on one side to the tip of the triangle on the opposite side. So now we want to make a little bit of a triangle for the bottom part of this white portion. So what you're going to do after you finish that last row, then you're going to take and turn your work so that it's facing where the rectangle, the longer portion, is facing up. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make your single crochet and then you're just going to evenly space one single crochet in every stitch across. That's my fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Then you can take and just turn your work, go into the next stitch over, make your single crochet, so that's my first, second, single crochet, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Then you're just going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over for your single crochet, for your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. You can see how you're getting narrower and narrower. Go ahead and turn your work. Go into the next stitch over for your first single crochet. Next stitch for your second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And you can stop at any time. I'm going to go ahead and make two more for mine, two more rows, 
where I just turn and make a single crochet into the next stitch and the numbers should be getting less and less so this is my one let me see lost count I'm just going to turn and see what this last one is next stitch for one two three and then I'm going to slip stitch into the fourth and last stitch so whatever row you finish on is the row that you'll slip stitch then go ahead and finish off and pull enough yarn through to sew this onto your dog so you could continue and make a point just continue on making a point it's up to you on what you want your dog to look like so now we're going to sew this onto the dog so I'm going to take the short loose yarn end and fold that into the inside and then I'm going to use the long end that I left for sewing and put that onto my tapestry needle and then you're going to line up to where the shorter end of the triangle is towards the chest of the dog and then just line up the corners at the top and then you're going to take and sew the piece in place and you can go back if you need to to sew it more securely I'm just trying to get up to the top portion I'm going to show you how I'm going to sew the top here so I'm going to come out on the corner of the triangle at the top of the face and then I'm going to take and grab the top stitch of this lower portion because I don't want the gray to show through so then I'm just going to take and go and stitch the two edges together all the way across to the other side just like this so that none of the gray is showing and then you can go back and finish sewing it in place to secure it. So go ahead, finish sewing this bottom portion in place. I'm just showing you a little bit of how I'm doing it. And then when you're finished, come back and we'll make the ears. So you can see what mine looks like. It looks adorable. I just love the look of that. And then this is what it looks like with the pipsqueak yarn. So you can decide which one that you like better. If you're using the pipsqueak yarn, you're going to need a larger crochet hook. I used my 9mm. And then you just make it the same way. The only difference is the um, number of chains that you place. You're going to make your slip knot the same way. And then you just make a chain of five. And then you just make a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So you can see how the nine millimeter crochet hook makes it easy to work with, easier I should say, to work with this style of yarn. But you can see how it's a little bit more difficult and intimidating because you can't really see the stitches. You can feel them though with the 9mm. And then you just make the length just like you did with the other white yarn. You just make the length that you need to go across and then if you like the more of it to go down here in the triangle then you don't chain one and you just turn your work the same way that you did for this one. Now I'm going to show you how to make the ears. So for the ears you're going to need your white colored yarn that you used for the snout as well as the main color that you used for your dog and you're going to make two triangles with the main color you used for your dog and then two colors with the white colored yarn. So you need two 
of the white triangles and then two of the gray. So they're made exactly the same way. So you're going to end up with four triangles, two in different colors. So you're going to use your four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to take your yarn and then you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of eight. So yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then you're going to take and go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and that will give you a stitch count of seven. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across. Then, after you finish your last single crochet into the last stitch, you're going to go ahead and chain one, turn your work, and that chain one counts as your first stitch for the next row. So then you go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And again, that's going to give you a stitch count of seven. So go ahead and finish one single crochet into every stitch back across and then come back. Now we're going to go ahead and we're not going to be making any more chain ones. You're just going to turn your work. So go ahead and just turn your work after you finish that last single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your first single crochet. Go into the next stitch over for your second single crochet. Next stitch for your third single crochet. Next stitch for your fourth, fifth, and then your last stitch will be your sec sixth single crochet. Then you're just going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over for your first single crochet, next stitch for your second, next stitch for your third, next stitch for your fourth, and then next stitch for your fifth. And then you're just going to turn your work. Go into the next stitch over for your first single crochet, next stitch for your second, next stitch for your third, and then your last stitch will be your fourth single crochet for that row. Turn your work. Next stitch for your first single crochet, next stitch for your second, next stitch for your third. And you can see how you're just forming this triangle. Go ahead and turn your work again. Next stitch for your first, next stitch for your second. Turn your work, make a single crochet. For the tip of the triangle, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull a little bit of yarn through just to bury into your work. So you're going to need one more in this color and then two more in the white color for a total of four and then come back. So you should have finished two of the gray triangles and then two of the white triangles. Go ahead and take one of each, the gray and the white, and I always put the white on top of the gray. And then I line it up so I can tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends.
and then I tie a knot at the tip of the triangle with the two loose yarn ends at the top. Then you're going to take your crochet hook I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to go into the stitch at the end of the white corner and a stitch of the gray. And you're going to bring up a loop with your gray or the same colored yarn as the triangle on the back. And then just tie a knot. And then just move the loose yarn ends to the side. We're going to tuck those into the inside of the triangle. Then you're going to chain one. And then you're just going to evenly space one single crochet into each stitch across the side of the triangle up to the tip of the triangle and you're crocheting the two pieces together. So one single crochet evenly spaced up the side of the triangle. When you get to the tip of the triangle, come back. So this is what my work looks like so far. I'm at the tip of the triangle. I'm going to go into the tip of the triangle. First I'm going to tuck the loose yarn ends towards the inside and then I'm going to grab the tip of both triangles. I'm going to make two single crochet into that tip of the triangle. And then I'm going to turn my work to the opposite side. And then I'm going to evenly space the single crochets down the opposite side. Make sure that you grab both triangles as you make your single crochet down the opposite side. Then when you finish the last stitch on the opposite side, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over. Make sure that you pull enough yarn through to sew the back of the ear. So this where you finished off will sew the back portion. You want to use the same color yarn to sew the back of the ear and then we're going to use the white colored yarn to sew the front and then you're just going to tuck those loose yarn ends in towards the center. If it's too much you can trim them. But I was able to tuck mine in and then you're just going to repeat the same thing with the other ear. Now you're ready to sew your ear onto your dog. You're going to need to, the white colored yarn first on your tapestry needle. So we're going to sew the white portion on first and you want to line up, you want to squeeze the ear together and you want to line it up on your dog. And how I line mine up was using the magic circle as a landmark and then also I use the eyes and then I just kind of fold the ear so that the white portion forms a little bit of a triangle and then once I have it positioned where I like it Make sure that the ear points up and then once you're happy with where the ear is placed on your dog, then you're going to take and sew using your white yarn and then come up on the opposite side 
Make sure you leave enough yarn for burying into your work. And then you can take and reposition if you need to. Make sure that the ear is still positioned the way that you want. You can push in that white portion if you want. And then go back down into the head and then back out where you initially went in. And then you want to reposition the ear again. And then tie a knot. And then reposition the ear again. And then make a couple more. Make sure the ear is pointy and then just sew a couple more stitches in to make sure it's nice and secure and make sure you only go through the head and not out through the back and then I'm constantly repositioning the ear and the fold so I have my little triangle then I'm going to go back down and then back out where I started and then I'm going to tie another knot and then trim my loose yarn end for the white and now you're ready to sew the back So you sew down the front white portion, the ear is straight the way you want it. So now you can take that gray portion and then you want to make sure that it's lined up the way you want it. And you can see that I use my eye as a marker and then I go back through towards the back and then I just position the back and then just sew the back portion in place and then you're going to bury your loose yarn ends and I bury them up into the ear so you can't see them and then you're going to sew the other ear on the exact same way so when I finish sewing the back I tie a knot in the back of the ear. I'm just showing this because I've seen some crochet work where the loose yarn ends are not hidden very well or secured very well and just makes the work look really bad. So you want to make sure that you tie a knot and bury your loose yarn end nicely. So I go right through the ear with my loose yarn end making sure that it doesn't show through to the front. And the, again I go through a couple of times now because I want to make sure that that loose yarn end doesn't come undone by, you know, kids like to pull on the ears and stuff and loose yarn ends may come out. So then you just take and trim your loose yarn end and then you just bury the white loose yarn ends the same way. Just go right in where I tied my knot. Come up through the white portion only, not through the back. We don't want any white stripes going through the back. And then, like I said before, I go through a couple of times. And then just trim your loose yarn ends. So go ahead, sew your other ear on, and then come back, and we'll see how your work looks. And these are the two looks that you can get for your Siberian Husky and I really, this is my favorite look but you can see how you can change the look if you like this look here this one is the softer pipsqueak yarn I think that the eyes also make the difference, I just love this eye by Fab Lab
So now I'm going to show you how to make the paws. All four paws are made the same way. You're going to need your white colored yarn and you're just going to take, we're going to make the magic circle. So just like we did before for the magic circle. And you're going to make your slip knot with your four millimeter crochet hook and then place six single crochet into the magic circle. We've done this before so I'm not going to go real slow. So six single crochet into the magic circle. You're going to go ahead and close it the same way. Turn your work and again you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches and then come back. So now we're going to be making two increase rounds. They are going to be consecutive. So the first increase round will be one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And the last increase round is going to be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around. So you should have finished with 24 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and you're going to make six decrease stitches. You're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, next stitch over, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for your decrease stitch. So that's your first one. You're going to make six of them. I'm just going to make them with you. Here's the second one. Third. Fourth. fifth, and sixth. And you can see how you create this little out pouching here in the front of the paw. Then go ahead and just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches to the yarn marker and then come back. Go ahead and turn your work so that the loose yarn end is on the inside or the wrong side of the paw. Now you can go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one round of just one single crochet in every stitch around. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So, so far you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. Go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up and we're going to make three decrease stitches. So this is the first decrease stitch. Second. And the third. Then you just make one single crochet in every stitch back around to the yarn marker and you can see how you make a really nice out pouching for the paw. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and you're going to be making one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 11 rounds. So 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And I just wanted to let you know that I have 15 stitches in my round. You can stuff the paw as you crochet. After you finish your 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and make sure that you have it stuffed with your craft stuffing. Don't overstuff it to where the crochet holes are huge, just enough to keep the foot 
firm. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're just going to start making decrease stitches until you can't make any more decrease stitches and then you're going to slip stitch it closed. So go ahead, make your decrease stitches and when you're almost closed come back and then I'll help you slip stitch the paw closed. So again, decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed. So now you can see that I'm almost closed, so I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a slip stitch. And then one more should do it. You just keep slip stitching until you're closed completely. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle, go right in where you finished off, and come out anywhere, and then I like to do a couple passes through, and then just trim your loose yarn end. Then you have one paw complete. You need four of them. Okay, so now you need four of these. They're made the exact same way, all four. I just wanted to show you a comparison. So this is the 100% cotton sparkly white yarn, and then this is with the regular, um, regular Big Twist white yarn. So you can see that there is a little bit of a side difference. The Big Twist is larger. So just so you're aware, either way will work. Both of these will work for your little dog. After you finish all four of your paws, go ahead and take two of them. And you're also going to need the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. And when you're putting the legs onto your dog, make sure that you have the paw facing forward. So you want to make sure that this out pouch is facing forward and then you want to line it up and I usually line up mine with the ears. So this one is really close to the front so I'm going to go a little bit over towards the back so the front of the paw lines up with the ear. And then I have the shoulder lining up with the bottom of the head and then you want to line up the other paw the exact same way on the opposite side. So once you know where you would like your paws, then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go down about one, two, three, four rows down and then go right through the center of one of the holes. And again, the paw, make sure it's facing forward. And then you're going to go through to the opposite side. Make sure that you go out on the opposite side and bring the yarn through. Make sure you leave plenty of yarn on the opposite side for tying a knot and burying. Then you want to place the paw up against the dog again. Make sure you have it lined up the way you want it to be on the dog. Then you're just going to look to see where the yarn would go through. So you just go through with your tapestry needle to the opposite side and you want to make sure that you go directly through to the opposite side and then bring the yarn through and you're going to leave about an inch between the leg and the body and then you're going to get your next leg and again I have the, the paw facing forward and you want to go down the same amount about four rows down on the side of the foot and then go directly through to the opposite side. Then you can bring the yarn through and again about an inch of yarn between the paw and the body. 
Then you can go back in through the leg, about a stitch over from where you came out. Go back through, and again you're going about a stitch away from where you went in with the previous yarn. Then you're going to go right back through the body, and I usually go about a stitch over from where I came out, and then about a stitch over from where I went in. And then I'm just going to go right through, about a stitch over again, and then out the opposite side. Now I like to go twice through. So now I'm going to go right back through again, repeating what I did before a second time. And this is what my work looks like after I went through a second time. Then you're ready to take your loose yarn ends and just pull the legs together. So you may have to pull one and then pull the other, but you want to pull the legs together on the body and then you can pull it as snug as you want and then once you have it as snug as you like you can take and tie a knot and then just bury your loose yarn ends and then you're going to repeat the same thing with the back legs and then the legs will go up and down now I'm going to show you another method that you can use also because this is so small you could go through the um, legs and the body by just holding it so make sure you have the legs placed where you want the paws are facing forward then you just take and hold the legs against the body take your tapestry needle and then you're just going to go right through and then you just have to be careful that you don't poke yourself. And then you just go right through to the opposite side. And again, you leave enough of a loose yarn end. And then you just go over a stitch over. Then go right back through to the opposite side. Come out about a stitch away. And then back through again. The bigger dogs, this is hard to do because you can't hold the legs to the body because they're so big, but with the smaller one you could. So either method is fine to use as long as your legs are straight and not crooked. And then you can take, puff out the body a little bit, and then just tie your knot. So that's an easy method as well. So whatever you, works best for you is the method that you can use. And then you just bury the loose yarn ends the same way. And this is how the adorable puppy is looking so far. All of the legs are sewn in place. Now you're ready for the tail. For the tail, you're going to start with the same colored yarn as your dog. And I'm using my gray colored yarn. We're going to start with a magic circle, so you just take and drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap it around your two middle fingers, hold in place your pinky and thumb, bring up a loop, make your slip knot, and then place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like you've done before. Hold the base of the six single crochet with your forefinger and thumb and then go ahead and close it. And then take that loose yarn in and close that. And now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one single crochet in every stitch around for as long as you would like your tail. 
When you come back, I'll show you the size that I have for my tail. And then as soon as you're able to, you can take and tuck that loose yarn end on the inside of the tail. But you can crochet for a little bit until you get a little bit longer and then turn it inside out. So again, one single crochet in every stitch around until you get the length that you want for your tail. So you can see how I turned it inside out and I've already tucked my loose yarn end into the inside and I'm just making one single crochet into every stitch around. I'm just kind of showing you how I'm holding the work. And then you just keep going around until you have the length that you like for the tail. For mine, I finished 12 rounds. Then, when you finish your last round, go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the dog. So now we just need the white portion that goes on the underside of the tail. To make that, just grab your same colored white yarn. You're going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, I'm using my 4 millimeter. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, bring the yarn through the loop for your slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. Then make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So bring up a loop, make your single crochet, go into the next stitch and make your single crochet. And so you're going to have two stitches total for the row. Then chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch over, So the chain one counts as the first stitch and then you make your single crochet. Chain one, turn your work, make your single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to keep repeating this until you get the length of your tail. So you'll put it towards the end of the tail and it should reach the tip and then come back. Once you get the length that you need for your tail, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this onto your tail. So for mine, I just laid the white portion on top of the tail. Then I just took and brought, sewed the white portion to one side of the tail. So don't go through to the opposite side. And then just go in and out, sewing the white portion to the gray portion. And then you're only sewing it to one side of the tail, so you're not going through to the other side. So now you're ready, after you sew the white portion on, you're ready to sew the tail onto the dog. So make sure that the white portion is underneath the tail. And then you're just going to position the tail onto the dog and I'm positioning mine so that you could curl it a little bit towards the back of the dog. So my position is centered about here's the magic circle one two three four about five rows six rows up six rows up 
and then I'm just going to take and sew it in place making sure that the gray portion is in line or facing the head of the dog and then the white portion is on the bottom and then you just go all around the, the bottom stitch of the tail and just sew it in place Make sure that you don't sew it on crooked. And then you just go in and out all around the tail and just sew it in place. And this is what the tail looks like after I've sewn it in place. And you can make it a little bit longer too if you wanted it to curl a little bit more. And then it flops down too. And then I just want to show you the position again. So here it's one, two, three, four for the bottom portion of the tail and then five, six for the top portion of the tail, and then you just center it. So now for the fur that goes under the belly of the dog, I'm going to show you how to make that. You're going to use your four millimeter crochet hook and the white colored yarn. If you want, you can use your pipsqueak yarn, but you just take the yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, hold, take your middle finger and thumb, hold the base of the loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. And then we're going to make a chain. So I'm just going to show you four of them, but you're going to make the chain the size that you want for the fur that goes under the dog. So for mine, I made a chain of ten and then you make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of nine. Then, when you reach the end, you're going to chain one and then turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over and you want to maintain a stitch count of nine so that chain one counts as your first stitch and then we just made the second stitch go into the next stitch for another single crochet and you're just going to keep repeating this until you get the length that you want for under your, your dog so for mine, I finished 20 rows. You can see how I kept or maintained a straight edge. You don't necessarily have to maintain a straight edge because this is just the decoration for under the dog. So you don't have to worry if yours is a little crooked. And then you just line up the back. And then this is how the front look, will line up. Now I'm just going to show you how to make a little bit of an hourglass for the front chest. So I just finished my last stitch of that row and instead of chaining one this time I'm just going to turn the work. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then make one single crochet in every stitch back across and that will give me a stitch count of eight. Then I'm just going to turn my work, go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet, and then I'm going to make one single crochet in each stitch back across, which will give me a stitch count of seven. Then turn your work, Go into the next stitch over, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in each stitch across, which will give you a stitch count of six. Then you're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet into each of the stitches, which will give you a stitch count of five. And then you could see how you formed a little bit of a narrowing. 
So now I'm going to show you, it's going to be a little bit of an hourglass shape. So we went in a little bit, now we're going to go out a little bit. So go ahead and chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the same stitch. So you're going to go right into that same stitch, not into the next stitch, and you're going to make another single crochet. So basically you just made two single crochet into the same stitch if you count that first chain one. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet into that last stitch. So that gives you a stitch count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work. Again, you're going to single crochet into the same stitch, which will give you two stitches, the chain one, and then the single crochet in the same stitch. So that's two. Go into the next stitch for a single crochet, and that's three next stitch for a single crochet is four five six seven and then that chain one is right on the end it's really tiny make sure you get into it and make two single crochet in that last stitch and then that gives you a stitch count of nine and you can see how it's starting to form your hourglass. Now for the last row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over because you want to maintain your stitch count of nine. So that's two single crochet, next stitch, three, next stitch, four single crochet, next stitch, five, next stitch six single crochet, next stitch seven, next stitch eight, and then your tiny little chain one, you'll put your last stitch into that chain one stitch which will give you a stitch count of nine. You can see how you have this really pretty little hourglass shape. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Make sure you bring enough yarn through to sew this white portion under the body of your dog. And remember the hourglass portion goes into the front of the dog. So I just line up the front portion of the white hourglass in the front of the dog and then make sure that the body, the end of the white portion is at the end of the body. Then you just take and sew this white portion all along the edge. Make sure that your stitches on top are small. And then you can go larger stitches inside the belly. You just want to secure it so it doesn't come off. So small stitch on top, large stitch under belly. And you're going to sew this all the way around. And this is what it looks like after sewing the white portion in place. Now we're ready for the collar and the little bow. You can use whatever color that you want for your collar and bow. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver, some of my leftover shocking pink. I'm just going to show you how to make a simple collar. So we're taking whatever color yarn that you want for your collar. You just take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop I'm using my 4 millimeter crochet hook. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them. So you yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, and four. So go ahead Finish a chain of 20. After you finish your chain of 20, go ahead and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb. Then you're going to make a chain of 3. 1, 
two, three. This is going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. Now you're going to make a double crochet into the stitch that you're holding, which is the fourth chain from the hook. So go ahead and yarn over, go into that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then you're going to make your double crochet. So you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make a double crochet in every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish making one double crochet into every stitch back across, and then come back. Then, after you finish making your double crochets all the way across, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the two ends of the collar together. But before we do that, for those of you that want to put a little charm, go ahead and get the charm. So the, the flowers that I used for the puppies are called Delightful Daisies and these are by Dress It Up. Looks like they have a website too, dressitup.com. And then for the collar, instead of a charm, I mean you can use a charm if you want to, I'm going to put one of these adorable cupcake buttons onto the collar. Sweet treats. And this is also from dressitup.com. So you could put a charm here if you want to, but for mine, I'm going to use one of these dress it up buttons and sew it onto the front of the collar. So now you can take the dog and then put the collar around the dog and then sew the two pieces together and then sew your charm on or you can sew your button on the collar. What's nice about these buttons is my tapestry needle will fit right through the back of the button. So for my collar, you have to decide what side you want showing on the collar and you also have to make sure it's not twisted. And then once you have it in place, you can take and sew the top portion of the collar together. and then just tie a knot. And then I'll bury the loose yarn end in a minute. And then I'm going to take the bottom portion and I'm going to sew the bottom portion together. And then I'm also going to use the tapestry needle to sew my cupcake button in place. And you can see how it just goes right through. And then I'm just going to finish tying a knot and sewing that in place. Make sure that you don't sew the collar to your dog. You want to be able to move it around. Unless you want it to not move around, then you can sew it to your dog. For me, I made it so I can move it around and then I make a double pass through the button to secure it and then once I'm finished sewing it in place I'm going to go up to the other loose yarn end and then I'm going to tie a knot and then bury the loose yarn ends and this is what the color looks like when I'm finished now I'm just going to go ahead and sew the flower button in place. It also has a large opening on the back of the button for fitting the tapestry needle through. Just position it where you want it. I'm going to position it right in front of the ear. And then I'm just going to go right behind the button, grab a corner of the ear, make sure I leave a Make sure I leave a long loose yarn end 
and then I'm just going to go right through the back of the button position it right where I want it and then I'm going to go right through the same portion of the ear for a second pass And then I'm going to tie a knot and then bury the loose yarn end. Now for the flower, as far as burying the loose yarn end, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to tie a knot several times. And for mine, I did it around six times. And then once I've tied six knots back there, then I'm just going to take and carefully trim the loose yarn ends in the back. Make sure you don't cut your dog's ear. And then just trim it as close as you can to the knot. And then kind of tuck that knot towards the back so you can't see it. And that's how it looks. So it looks good. You can't see where I tied that knot. And the reason I tied so many knots is so that it won't come out easily. Now I'm going to show you how I made this adorable baseball hat. You can use whatever yarn choice that you want for the hat, as long as it's equivalent to the yarn that I'm using on video tutorial. The yarn that I used was I love this yarn neons here's some information about this yarn and the color is blue neon on video tutorial I'm using the same style of yarn except I'm going to be using a metallic peacock colored we're going to start with the magic circle, so just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet, single crochet. And then you're going to have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. This one's closing. Then take and pull on that loose yarn end. And then just turn your work to form a circle. And then you're going to make two single crochet into that first stitch and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 and then come back. Then you're going to take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and then you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. And when you get back to the yarn marker, you should have a total of 12 stitches. So after you finish the 12 stitches, we're going to be moving up the yarn marker to where we left off, but before we do that, we're going to need to find the 8th stitch. So count over to the 8th stitch, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you're just going to place a yarn marker into that 8th stitch. Sorry about that. So again, Put your crochet hook into the eighth stitch and then you're going to take and grab a second yarn marker and bring it through 
to mark that eighth stitch because we're going to skip that stitch. So you want to know when you get there which stitch that you're going to be skipping. Then go ahead and move up the yarn marker to where you left off. And this is also going to be an increase round, which means that we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So in the first stitch, you're going to make one single crochet. And now you're going to be skipping that second stitch. But before we skip that second stitch, you want to make a chain. So we're going to make a chain of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after you make that chain of eight, you're going to skip that second stitch and you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch for the third stitch. So skip the second stitch go into that third stitch, make a single crochet, you want to make sure to go through the loop, all the loops on the hook, and then you see how you make a chain 8 loop. Now you're going to go into the same stitch, that third stitch, make one more single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch. One single crochet into the next stitch. Two single crochet into the next stitch, and then that brings you to the seventh stitch. Now you're going to make your second chain eight loop. You're going to skip the eighth stitch. You can go ahead and remove that yarn marker. We're going to be skipping that stitch. So go ahead and chain eight. And then you're going to skip the 8th stitch and make one single crochet into the ninth stitch. And then you can see how you formed your second ear loop. Then you're going to make two single crochet into the 10th stitch. one single crochet into the eleventh stitch and then two single crochet into the twelfth stitch. Then you can take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then you're just going to make 8 single crochet into that chain 8 loop. So go into that loop, bring up a loop, make your single crochet so for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight. So I have eight single crochet into the chain eight loop. Then you're going to make one single crochet into each of the stitches until you get to your next chain eight loop.
Then you're going to make eight single crochet into this next chain eight loop. So far I have three. Oops, I'm going to go back a little bit so you can see. I'm going to finish making eight, so that's my fourth. Fifth, sixth, and what's nice is you can move the single crochet over if you need to. So it was six, seven, and eight. So I have eight single crochet into that second chain, eight loop. Then you're going to make a single crochet into that first stitch on the center piece. We're going towards the yarn marker. So one single crochet in each of those stitches. Then you can go ahead and move your yarn marker up for the next round. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed five rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of five rounds and then come back. So you can see that I'm on my second round right now and I have a stitch count of 30 in the round so I'm going to maintain that stitch count all the way around until I've finished five rounds. So this is what my work looks like so far. And I finished five rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Now you can take your yarn marker and remove it. And you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Now you want to take your tapestry needle and just bury any of your loose yarn ends by going through the wrong side of your work and just weaving the loose yarn end with your tapestry needle through the work. Then you can go ahead and trim it. So go ahead and bury any of your loose yarn ends. Now you can set this aside for now. We're going to work on the brim of the hat. For the brim of the hat, you're going to take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make a chain. We're going to make a chain of 11. So yarn over, go through the loop for 1, 2, 3, Four. Go ahead, finish a chain of 11, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 11, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So go ahead and bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. That should leave you with a stitch count of 10. When you finish your last stitch, go ahead and turn your work. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And then that will leave you with a stitch count of 9. Now you're going to turn your work again after you finish your last stitch. Go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. Then make one single crochet in every stitch back across and that will give you a stitch count of eight. 
Now after you finish that stitch count of eight, go ahead and turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over and that will be your first single crochet next stitch for your second single crochet next stitch for your third next for your fourth next for your fifth sixth and seventh now you're going to turn your work and this will be our last row and you can see how the edges are slanting up which is what you want for the brim of the hat and then you're going to go into that next stitch over for your first single crochet next stitch for your second next stitch for your third next stitch for your fourth next stitch for your fifth and then you're going to make a slip stitch into that sixth stitch so go into that next stitch yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch then you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and go ahead and pull enough yarn through to sew the brim onto the hat So the first thing you're going to do is put your tapestry needle onto that long end that you left for sewing. And you can see that where you finished off is at the curve of the hat. So you want to take, go in right where you finished off, and bring, make small stitches, and bring the yarn back to the edge of the brim. for sewing. Then you can go ahead and bury the short loose yarn end. Just take and weave it onto the wrong side of the hat. And I like to go in a couple of times, make sure that it's secure. Then you can go ahead and trim that loose yarn end. Then you're ready to sew the brim onto the hat. So the first thing you're going to do is take the hat and you could see right where I buried my loose yarn end. This is where I finished off. I'm going to put this towards the back of the hat like this. So this is the front of the hat. But go ahead and count over or actually you don't even need to count, you can just line up. So this is the right side of the hat. Then go ahead and take the brim of the hat and you want the curve facing upwards and you want the right side of the hat facing towards the right side of the right side of the brim facing the right side of the hat. And then you just want to line it up where you want it to fall. So if this is the front of the hat, if you sew the brim here, it will fall forward and look like this on the hat. And this is an example of what it would look like on your dog. So you can kind of see where you want the brim of the hat to fall forward on your dog. Once you have it positioned where you want, Go ahead and lay it, the brim of the hat, against your hat. Take the long end that you left for sewing and the tapestry needle and you're going to take and sew the end stitch on the brim of the hat and the stitch around the bottom of the hat. And then you're just going to sew the two pieces together. So you can see how I'm getting just a stitch at the bottom of the hat and then going through the stitch of the brim of the hat. And I'm sewing the two pieces together. So go ahead and sew all along the brim of the hat, securing it to your hat, and then come back. 
After you finish sewing that last stitch, we're going to tie a knot. So you just go in through the bottom stitch of the hat and the brim again, forming a loop. Go through the loop with your tapestry needle to bring down or cinch down a knot. And I like to do that twice. Then you can take and bury the loose yarn end and I, I just like to weave it through my work and then I even go back across again. Then you can just trim it on the wrong side. Then you can take and flop down the brim of the hat. And this is what it looks like on my dog. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to make the collar, the name tag actually for the collar. And you can use whatever gold or yellow um, colored yarn that you want. I used Pound of Love Yellow for the boy dog. But on video tutorial, I'm just demonstrating with my Red Heart Super Saver. And this is just a gold colored yarn. And here's some information about this yarn. So the first thing you're going to do is just start with a magic circle. So go ahead and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Take your four millimeter crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers. Go ahead and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then go ahead and make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're just going to take your forefinger and thumb and hold the base of the six single crochet. Then go ahead and pull on one of those loops and again if it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. This one's closing. Just gently close it as much as you can. You can close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work and we're going to slip it into a circle now by going into that first stitch. And you're going to place two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. I'll make one more with you. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. Now you can take and turn your work over and then just pull on that loose yarn end to close up the center of the magic circle. Now you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can make a chain four. One, two, three, four. So I have a chain of four. Then you're going to slip stitch into the same stitch. So go into the same stitch, yarn over, and then bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then what that did is just made a little loop that you can sew, put your tapestry needle through the loop to sew the, the name tag onto your collar. So before you do that, you're going to want to bury your loose yarn ends. So you just take your loose yarn ends on your tapestry needle and then you just kind of weave it. This is the right side. So you determine which side you want is your right side and then you're just going to bury the loose yarn ends on the wrong side. 
you just take and weave the loose yarn end through the back. So go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends. Then your name tag is ready to sew on to the collar.